Do you remember when games used to come out on Tuesdays instead of Thursdays and Fridays? Well, we do. And that's why the Starmancer Alpha is coming out today, April 23rd, a Tuesday. And also because it was Easter last weekend, and so I didn't really have a lot of time to do stuff, and then on Monday I, I could, I caught up anyway. But mostly, it's because of history. It's about legacy. And I think if anything else, that's what you can take from Starmancer. Alright, I think you can all agree that was a good intro. Moving on. So the, uh, the Alpha's coming out today, on Tuesday. Um, unless you're seeing this, watching this tomorrow, and then it, it came out yesterday, but whatever, it doesn't matter. We're, right now, we're distributing keys via backer kit. You should be getting an email soon if you haven't already. There is a Mac build, a Linux build, and a PC build. And you'll get one key for all of those, So if you're, and it's all handled through Steam. So if you're planning on your MacBook or your non-MacBook, whatever, however that works, you just log on to your Steam account, and you down download the game, and it'll be the Mac version. And then if you switch to that same account, and you go to a, a Windows computer, you'll have the Windows version, and, and same thing with Linux. I didn't do a lot of extensive testing with the Mac and Linux version, but I did a little bit, and it seems okay. On my MacBook, it's, it seems like I'm getting maybe 30 to 45 frames per second. And on Linux, I'm getting something similar. I would guess that the primary reason is that on Windows, we're using DirectX. But on Mac and Linux, it's using OpenGL. So there might be some things that we're doing on Windows that we never noticed had, had bad performance. But we'll work on that. And this might not matter to most of you, but there are people out there, by the way, who play on Mac and Linux. And so I'm trying to not shortchange any of you people. Okay, moving on. So the alpha is coming out, and what I what I want to stress is, this is not early access, and we don't view it as early access. We view this as, quite honestly, the least fun that you're ever going to have in Starmancer is going to be when you play in the alpha. Starmancer is going to be in the worst state it will ever be, and it's going to have the fewest features. Things are going to break a lot. You're going to save, and then your save is going to break, and you lose all your progress. You're going to hopefully play for a few hours. Uh, and then the game crashes and, and you lose all of it. So that's what you're looking forward to. Probably if you like a feature, it will stop working completely. And then we'll remove it. So that's what you're looking forward to for Alpha. But if that sounds pretty good, then hooray, you're in the right spot. And once again, I really want to stress, the game is not ready for release. You're playing early. That's why you're here because you want to play early before it's ready if it was ready it wouldn't be alpha it would just, it would just be alpha. Anyway, i just really want to stress that that we're not trying to say hey look how cool the game is it's ready it's fun it's awesome but you don't care about that so i guess i'll give a little sort of tutorial on what to do in the video or in the game hopefully by the way everything's pretty pretty obvious our mentality is that if you don't know how to do something in starmancer it's not your fault it's our fault for making it too confusing so if you don't know why your oxygen machine isn't doing anything and you can't figure it out, it's on us. You shouldn't have to take some sort of college class to understand, or even high school, to be honest, to understand how it works. But anyway, that's all boring. Let me press new. I'll ask you to print, enter name. By the way, spoiler alert, this name does nothing right now. But one day it will. So we'll say our name is Tony. Then you press play. And you see this beautiful station. By the way, if you're the type of person who hates any sort of, I guess, spoilers, you should probably you should probably stop watching right now. But whatever. Okay, so you're presented with this here station, and it does a bunch of stuff. And I don't really want to go through an elaborate tutorial right now to show you literally everything. It doesn't really matter. I just want to go over some of the, the finer things. Uh, so the first thing is, if you go to the whole tab... Just kidding. If you go to the Objects tab, and you go to the Dev category, we left this in, just so that you can do all sorts of interesting things if you want to. The purpose of Objects in the Dev tab, or I guess the reason they're in it, is because they're not implemented yet, or they're not finished. So you can place them, but they're probably not going to do anything. So if you place stuff in here and it breaks, I I don't care. It's not my fault. It's your fault for placing them. Like, you could try to place another Starmancer core, but you probably can't, because I set the build cost of Starmancer core to be a head. Like a head, like an H E A D, like a head, but you'll never have a head on a shelf, so sh shouldn't be able to do that. Hopefully, but that doesn't matter. Um, so the very first thing you want to do when you play, besides the dev tab thing, here, is you look around at your stuff, you zoom in, you zoom out, you, all, you do all that sort of cool things. Um, but if you look on the right side of the screen, 
you'll see that you have some warnings. So it talks about low oxygen, low temperature, no ducts, and unpowered objects. And you'll see that there's one room with low or one low oxygen notification and whatever you, you can count. That doesn't matter. And the reason everything's red is because there's low oxygen and also low temperature in all these rooms. And that's just a notification sort of to tell you. And if you were to click on an object here that has this little power notification, you'll see unpowered object connect to working generator. Similarly, if you were to click on the oxygen recycler, you would see all of this. And you would also see apparently two no ducks warning. Well, I don't know how to edit videos, so you're just going to see that. But if you go over here to the generator, you'll notice that it's all line. So if you press turn online, it'll turn online. And you kind of get a little feedback too because there's no lights or anything. But if you didn't know there's supposed to be lights, you wouldn't know that. But anyway, if you press turn online, it closed. It turns online. They're all powered. Those power warnings go away. Everyone's kind of happy. But the oxygen machine is still complaining about no ducts. And you have the stuff about low oxygen and low temperature. And to place a duct, you can just click on air duct. You can also click on atmosphere, go to air duct, and it gives you a nice little description. Then you click on duct. You place a duct, a little build guy should come, and there he is, the nanobot. He does cool stuff. I don't know why you can click on him, but you can. And then wow, wowee guys, the oxygen has been distributed. You know, I really wish I knew how to edit videos so I could cut out that wowee, but I don't, so this is just what we're doing. And then besides that, um, I really want to encourage you to just play and figure things out. I don't want to explain everything to you because if I explain it to you, I have no idea of knowing if something is clear or obvious. And I do want to stress again that if something is confusing, it's, it's the developer's fault. It's our fault. If you can't figure out how to do something, it's because the interface failed to teach you how to do it correctly. And so tell us those things. That's great. I'm like a super big critic of, of bad interfaces in games. And I don't want this game to have a better interface. But anyway, the only other thing I want to teach you is how to spawn colonists because that's probably what you're interested in. And to spawn colonists, I gave you a little handy dandy bio tank here. If you click it, um, and if you go to the production tab, which a lot of these objects have production tabs, like this one, the generator, uh, it needs fuel and fuel creates electricity. And if it runs out of fuel, it will stop producing electricity and that's very bad. Similarly, this thing needs biomass, but I stock it with some biomass. It doesn't tell you how much biomass it needs, unfortunately. It just says biomass. You need five. It doesn't tell you. And you have to manually click Grow Colonists. A reason you have to manually click this, by the way, is because it requires 500 power when it's generating colonists. And that's a lot sometimes. And also so that you have control over the amount of colonists you have and that sort of thing. You know, and also so that you can stockpile it with extra bi biomass. And then this guy's going to grow. He does his thing. He goes from a little teeny tiny cute thing into an even bigger, cuter thing. And while he's growing, I'm going to direct you to the mining probe, which is right here, the mining drone. And the mining drone brings back ore and ice. Now it needs fuel, and it creates ore and ice. And right now it has no fuel, so it's not moving anything. But conveniently, I stock some fuel on the shelf that's right next to it. And also to get fuel, you take ore, and ore creates metal and fuel. So the mining drone brings ore and then the ore is converted into fuel and it's the beautiful circle of life i don't know what the total duration is how long it takes these guys to to grow i don't know probably like an hour or two in game which is 60 or two seconds okay so he grew a little dude also lights turn on because the columnist is conscious and around click on him dimple daniel that's funny and then go to laborer dimple daniel was a randomly generated name from the game forever ago and I always thought it was just a funny name to me and I just love that name and so then I always add it to everything but it was just a good coincidence because I think he might have been Dimple Daniel last video too it was just a complete coincidence and he's doing labor stuff eventually he'll do something and then another confusing thing sort of is that the bio tank has a cooldown of I think an, uh, one or two game hours which is 60 or 120 game minutes and one game minute is one second right now. So it should be a cool down about two minutes or, or um, one or two minutes. And then you'll be able to click Grow Columnist again. Ideally, it would display this in the interface, but it does not. That's a little confusing, so that's why I wanted to explain it to you. And besides that, the only other thing that might be particularly confusing is getting food. To get food, you need to make a crop spot. And then your guy's going to come and build it. 
but you also need a crop drop off. If you don't have a crop drop off, the colonists won't know what to do with the crops because crops are different than the crates. And they just need a place to take the crops. Here, you can also change the crops into different things. And you should make somebody a farmer if you want them to grow crops. Um, I think that's about it. This guy looks like he's about to drop off some fuel, and then this thing goes away. He flies into the sky, and he's gone. And then he'll be back, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds, 60 seconds, something like that. And then the circle of life will forever continue. So as long as you have colonists that have food, and you have biomass, you'll be good to go. And then, I guess that's important too, getting biomass. You get biomass through, well, you can figure it out, but it's through the food recycler. Through the food recycler, you grow tomatoes. The tomatoes are recycled into biomass. The biomass is loaded back to the biotank. And then you have colonists. So you have colonists who are made with tomatoes or wheat or what have you. Besides that, that's maybe about it for you. I would encourage you to place wall vents on exterior walls as well. Oh, one more thing. The oxygen is created with clean water, and you get clean water by taking ice, which is um, produced in your mining drone, and you drop it off at a water recycler, and then it gets converted into dirty water, and then it gets manufactured here, and then through some sort of hydrolysis, I guess, we're splitting H2O into oxygen gas, and then we're just discarding the hydrogen. I don't know how scientifically accurate it is, but it's at least future tech plausible, so that's what we're doing here. So water, if you notice your water's going low, everybody will probably soon die. And that might be it. Now the next things, anything else? Not really. Um, oh yeah, streaming and recording YouTube videos. You cannot stream or record any videos of the, actually you can't upload, you can record them because we wouldn't know, but you can't stream or record any videos of the of the alpha until June 1st uh, our reasons are one and June 1st is it's only like six weeks away so it's not even that far um, we just want to fix any major issues right away so if there's something just blatantly wrong like if you play for like five minutes and then your whole screen goes black or something like that um, and then also right now the Mac build and the Linux build aren't in the best states and then maybe on some PCs it might not be ideal so we kind of want to give people a chance to like get the game to a good place before they were anyone might you know potentially worry about oh I want to be the first person to to record or stream the video uh, stream Star Mancer or something like that so this way kind of kind of have an even footing so anyway June first for streaming if you're a streamer same with uploading YouTube videos um, and if you have any questions if you want any uh, if you want to provide any suggestions or feedback please go to our Discord I attached a link in the um, when I gave you the keys on backer kit and also in the Kickstarter post. Um, also, you can go to our website, scroll to the very bottom, and there's a link to the Discord there as well. So please go to the Discord. If you give us bug reports anywhere else, we probably won't see them. We might see them, but, but maybe not. So please just go to the Discord. It's easiest. So we have like the list of controls in the game there, and we have other, hopefully, ideally, we'll have some other stuff there too. And plus, you can talk about Star Mancer. So what's better than that? And also, modding. Right now, you cannot write custom mods in C Sharp, also Visual Basic because of adding asset pack scripts. Uh, in order to, uh, this doesn't matter to most of you, but just some of you modding, I, what I have to do is I have to move some stuff around internally to facilitate you being able to add your own objects to the game. Um, and that's just, just a little, just, it's just some small backend stuff that I didn't feel like doing you know, earlier because I didn't feel like it, I didn't feel like Alpha should get pushed back just for that because who's, honestly who's going to be modding in the first week of Alpha. So I just, but anyway. So, but if you're looking to mod, you can't mod quite yet, but probably by the end of the week or something like that, I'll have it, I'll have it sorted out. But like I said, I was trying to do other stuff first. And by adding new objects, I mean like you could, like, like I want you to literally be able to add like a different object, like a generator. Like you want to add your own generator or your own shelf or something like that. And to do that, there's a bunch of scripts we use. One of the scripts, for instance, controls um, the positions of objects on shelves. You know, another script might control animators or might link renderers, that, that sort of thing. So it doesn't matter. And that should be that should be it for the alpha. So hopefully you have fun with it. And um, also we understand that you're just a tester. This isn't your job. So I would really encourage you to, you know, play play a little bit, play like 20 minutes, and just come back every once in a while and just play again. If you're looking to have fun, if you're looking to genuinely alpha test and play as much as possible. But if you're looking to have fun with Starmancer, 
you should wait as long as possible. You should wait for release. If that's what you, if you're looking to binge it over a weekend and just play it and play and have fun, again, you should wait because I'm stressing this is not early access. The game is not ready to be released. And that's all. Oh, also, if you don't have alpha ac alpha access, you'll never get it. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. Because again, it's not early access. If you could buy alpha right now and play it right now, the game would just be released. So that's not what we're we're doing. We offer alpha access as as like um, an incentive or maybe a reward or a thanks or a consolation for people who wanted to give us extra money in the Kickstarter when they didn't have to. And we're treating beta the exact same way, although you can still get beta access for, I think, $35. And we're never going to lower that price, by the way, because that was the price in the Kickstarter. And that would be just, I don't even care if anyone has a differing opinion on this. We're never going to make the price less than what it was in the Kickstarter. And that should be it. So hopefully you join the Discord. And I'm going to try and figure out how to stop this video without alt-tabbing. Oh, I got it. There's a keyboard shortcut. By the way, this video is powered by LOP.